Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 on Channel's television coming to you live from Lagos. All right, we have some pictures that were sent in to us on our eyewitness portal. Now, our eyewitness reporter sent in this one showing a protest. He says the protest is by the Lao Tech students in Ogbomosho who are not happy with the robbery attacks they've been experiencing for some time. They want the government to, to tighten their security. This next one shows a burning petrol truck at the Bode Sadu area, and our reporter says burning trucks are almost a daily occurrence, essentially because of the bad state of the road on the Ilori Mokwa Jeba axis. And here in Lagos, our eyewitness reporter sent in this picture of a truck overloaded with people on the third mainland bridge. He's calling on the attention of road safety officials to this situation, which he said is becoming too common on the bridge. Thanks a lot for sending in your pictures, and we do ask you to continue to keep them coming. Well, hopefully the Senate will reconvene tomorrow to continue the screening exercise for the outstanding ministerial nominees. For many, the economy is the most important sector because it sets the pace for national development. So who gets this slot? Well, that's for the president to decide. But for us, what are the top things the new Minister of Economy should do in the first three months? Joining me now on the news at 10 on the agenda setting role is an economist, Mr. Ehi Enyeyen. Thank you so much for joining us on the news at 10 tonight. Good evening, John. It's a pleasure to be with you. Um, there's been so much talk about clear policy direction concerning this administration. Many economists have said, oh, they can't do much except we know where we're going in terms of direction. Do you think that's where the new Minister for Economy should kick off from? No, de definitely, because... Um what has happened is that, uh, unfortunately, <clears throat> four years, four months into the tenure, you know, we still don't have clearly articulated uh, direction as to where the, the, the government uh, wants to take the, the economy. Um, we have had snippets of, uh, um, you know, statements by the president. We've had, um, you know, his media people, his uh, APC spokespeople, you know, and, you know, but we haven't had something official, something well articulated, something documented coming from the government formally because we've not had a minister. So it is, um, I mean, the, 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 the businessmen, the invest, invest, investment uh, uh, community, the you know, players in the economy are excited that eventually things will begin to move because, I mean, things have been at a lull and uh, there have been talk about whether, there have been debates whether we are about to enter recession or even whether we are already in recession. If you talk to the average uh, businessman <laughs> uh, who is having difficulty, um, you know, buying, and, buying selling. and selling and getting his goods out there and getting them bought, you know, it, 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 the truth is that they are, things have been stagnant. So the minister of uh, the, the minister has his work cut out for him, and uh, we hope that he can hit the ground or he she can hit the ground running. We keep hearing hit the ground running. What are those things you want to see on paper in terms of policy this time around? Clearly, the, the, in terms of uh, the priority, you know, the priority, yeah. you, you know, the, during the campaign, the APC said a lot about uh, what it wants to do with regard to job creation, for instance, with regard to uh, payment to unemployed youth and all that. And uh, now that it's, government, it's in government, you know, we, we've had a situation where even the document that was released has been questioned whether it was authentic. I mean, uh, um, the, the presidency has said <laughs> it has virtually, um, you know, denied knowledge of that. I think the Minister of Finance should start off by coming up with a clear, um, a clear, a clear direction with regard to how he is actually going to help to create new jobs. How is he going to um, reduce unemployment? Because with the kind of population we have, and we have, you know, we, uh, unemployment is a major problem. And I think that um, you know that uh, will be a priority. Will be the issue of probably um, how do we enhance government revenue? A situation where the oil 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 price has continued to uh, where it's stabilized about fifty dollars now, but the, the 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 prospects are dim. It's clear that uh, the days of uh, oil selling at over hundred dollars those days are gone forever. We've been talking about diversifying our economy. How, is it, how exactly does the government want to diversify the economy? What we believe what's going to be its direction? You know, the, what's going to be the policy with regard to agriculture, with regard to solid middle development, with regard to um, you know, moving the economy away from being oil-based, as it has been over these years, 
Um, and actually, you know, going beyond sloganeering, actually diversify our economy. What about the exchange rate? Seeing as the, uh, with the fluctuation and the uncertainty, a lot of economists mm. say they don't mind taking risks, risks, but it's when there's uncertainty that yes. they that they are unhappy, even for international investors as well. So, what do you see? You know, the if I what we've had, what we've, what what uh, we've seen, what we what has happened is that there are two arms. You know, there should be two legs to economic policy: the budget policy uh, bit and then the fiscal policy bit. But because we've not had the Minister of Finance. We've actually been clapping with one hand. That one hand being the monetary policy, which is in, or under the purview of the central bank. So with all the central bank has tried to do, and uh, you know, is, it, it, there's not been this uh, connect between fiscal policy. If I don't know, we don't really know what the fiscal policy is right now. So, so basically with regard to exchange rates, it's not that the government cannot continue. The, the central bank has tried in the past to defend the Naira, and uh, the president has come out to say that he will, not, he will not allow for that devaluation of the, of, of the Naira. Now, this is, um, <laughs> you know, it, it, there's a bit of a, a, um, well, a dissonance here. Because on one hand, the, the presidency obviously wants us to have a stable exchange rate, which is not, uh, you know, a, a, a strong exchange rate. The, the central bank is not uh, in the position, even if it wants to, it doesn't, we don't have the foreign exchange to continue to defend the Naira. So the Minister of Finance is going to have to, uh, Come out clearly. So, are we are we going to allow Naira to float? Are we going to deploy more of our external reserves to defend the Naira? And um, the, the the reality is that there is a challenge there. And I hope that you know we are not, we are not going to go back to the era of uh, trying to fix the exchange rate by fiat. Look at what happened when the government decided that uh, people going on pilgrimage should be given concessionary. Um, I mean, they should buy FX at the concessionary rate. Already, that has created an arbitrary opportunity because they are going to come back and sell their, 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 their foreign FX on the parallel market. And the, 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 the gap between the official exchange rates as of now is about 197 uh, Naira to the dollar officially, but we know how much it's going for in the parallel market. And the fear is that um, in the next few months, people are afraid that it could even go as high as $250 to 250 Naira to the dollar. You know, so the uncertainty in the FX market is, uh, is, not, is, uh, is, a, is a cause for concern, and the, and the Minister of Finance should work with the central bank to ensure that, um, um, <laughs> you know, we're we, we on top of it. The oh, yeah, IMF definitely. wants us to flow the data. Mm. And uh, in a free market economy such as ours, the truth is that you cannot, you cannot hold down the exchange rate for too long. So right. it, is, it, is, it is a challenge. All right. Economist Mr. Ehi Enyeyen, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us on the news at 10 tonight. Thank you very much, Ijoma. The military says it's working hard to ensure that Boko Haram is flushed out of Nigerian territory within the three-month deadline given by President Buhari. The Chief of Defense Staff, General Abayomi Ulunishaki, said this while briefing State House correspondents after a meeting with the President. He explained that the meeting reviewed the operations of the military 60 days into the directive given by President Buhari. General Olonishaki insisted that the mandate will be delivered in spite of the challenges of weather and logistics. Recently, Boko Haram terrorists have inflicted serious damage on residents of Borono State as suicide bombers through their activities in the northeast have left about 100 dead in the last three months. At their swearing in, President Muhammad Buhari had given them three months within which to flush out Boko Haram in the northeast. They've done 60 days already and have come to review their operations so far. It's a normal consultation we have with our Commander-in-Chief to intimate him of how uh, the issues are on the ground and let him know exactly after a review, after 60 days we have a two-way review and then we had to come and brief him on to the challenges we still have and ensuring that uh, the mandate is uh, properly uh, delivered. He identifies some of the challenges. The challenges, we're well, looking at uh, challenges of probably the weather, as it were, and some other uh, logistics that we think we feel that we should uh, have and uh, so that um, the mandate can quickly be uh, delivered. The president is said to be disposed to their requests. After all, he's the one that has given the mandate to clear Boko Haram and reclaim all the lost territories within three months. Is the mandate feasible? It's a military operation, and military operations have timelines. 
and these timelines, we are working with them assiduously. On whether there are new directives, the Permanent Secretary Minister of Defence says the President is not in doubt with the capabilities of the Nigerian Army. By and large, to be sincere to Mr. President, excited, is very happy, uh, very confident that the leadership he has put in Nigerian Armed Forces will do Nigeria proud. The President will be meeting with the service chiefs in the next few days in continuation of the review as the deadline draws nearer. Chukuma Onwekusi, Channels Television News. The Lagos State Government has launched the Domestic Violence Guidelines, which is to serve as the basic and single reference point for all responder agencies handling cases of domestic violence. The launch took place at a symposium held today to commemorate the Domestic Violence Awareness Month for 2015. Our Judiciary Correspondent Shola Shoyeli reports. They are unable to make their own decisions, voice their own opinions. Domestic violence remains a devastating public health crisis, as statistics reveals that one in four women will be physically or sexually assaulted by a partner at some point in her life. Statistics also shows that there's been an increase in the number of reported cases of domestic violence. At the instance of the Lagos State Domestic and Sexual Violence Response Team, gender desk officers of the police force, artisans, market men and women, religious clerics, magistrates and family court judges, NGOs, representatives of the state's ministries of justice, health and education, students and indeed all concerned stakeholders are here to create more awareness and commitment in the fight to end domestic violence. Ending domestic violence requires a collaborative effort involving every part of a society and law enforcement and justice system must work to hold offenders accountable and to protect victims. In law, we refer to some people as busybodies. If you don't have an interest in an action, you cannot bring it. There is an exception under the domestic violence law. Nobody is a busybody, or we are all busybodies. We must be busybodies to protect our fellow human beings. We need to enter into other people's realities, whether it's not, even if it's not ours. We need to, to understand that we must stop talking. We need to start acting. The state government has launched the domestic violence guidelines for responder agencies. The guidelines details the step-by-step -step procedures to be followed by police officers and all other relevant agencies involved in the response to domestic violence. Shola Sheeli, Channels Television News. When the news at 10 returns, Nigeria's former president, Goodluck Jonathan, leads 54-man Commonwealth Observer team for the country's general elections. He joins again.